So here's a nestle. So when we have a scanning parameter and we you, and when we have uh, some signal, uh, depending on the scanning parameter like this. And looking at the signal, the signal looks around this parameter range. Uh, it seems the signal is saturated and not necessary to take many data points around here. But um, in this region, the uh, signal was, is still fluctuating and we are not sure what's happening here. And we want to measure more, uh, sample more around here. So the unclear region must be sampled more. Right? So the key is how to know uh, this unclear region. And usually uh, we make a fitting function for a signal to estimate uh, which part is correct and not. And in, in many cases, we use the, the, we assume the model function in uh, for a natural phenomena, we frequently use the, the exponential function. In this case, uh, the summation of multi-exponential function. However, uh, in many uh, analytical measurements, such as uh, the, the vibrational oscillations. So the vibrational spectroscopy and also X-ray absorption spectroscopy, the signal shape is actually uh, not much, not cannot be uh, modeled well by the, some sort of the func mathematical function. Uh, in this case, um, we can use uh, non-parametric fitting can be used, which is a uh, recently uh, frequently used in the informatics field. And one of the most famous, uh, the non-parametric fitting is uh, Gaussian process regression, GP regression. So here's a GP regression, some brief explanation. So if, when you have a, a three data points, for example, and these data points are assured to have uh, some uh, distribution, whether some Gaussian uh, distribution, and uh, they are correlated each other. And to uh, describe this, uh, this data uh, distribution, we can use a multivariate uh, Gauss Gaussian distribution, meaning that uh, you have a multidimensional Gaussian distribution with uh, average value and also the covariant uh, matrix. Uh, in the covariant matrix, uh, in the diagonal, uh, diagonal component uh, means the dispersion of each uh, values, but um, you have some uh, off diagonal component which correspond to the correlation between the first data and the second data and worse. And for example, uh, if you have some uh, mean value and also uh, some uh, dispersion in the diagonal matrix, but uh, for example, first and the second data has a strong correlation, and and the third one is uh, less because uh, the first data and the third data is far away, like like that, and the second and the third data is in the kind of the uh, medium range of the correlation. So uh, this uh, K can be, uh, is called a kernel, which um, you can uh, describe how the, each of the data distribution are correlated. And in many of the cases, uh, uh, the most fundamental kernel is uh, called the Gaussian kernel, which is the written like this. So Gaussian distribution between the two data points. And simply stated, uh, the, the nearer the values are, the similar values are taken. So by doing this, uh, looking at the signal, now uh, you want to know the value at x e x star. And then in this case, you can make uh, some extra component of the, to the the multivariate Gaussian distribution. And by using the matrix component in this, uh, in this uh, covariance matrix, 
uh, you could actually calculate the average value and then dispersion value of at x star. So uh, you can obtain the, these values in this graph. And if you do the sim uh, same procedure in any data point in, in x, you can obtain uh, the, the uh, prediction range of the, the function. So meaning the good thing is uh, not only the average value, but also the estimation range can be uh, predicted by using uh, GP regression. Now I mentioned uh, Bayesian estimation. Uh, what it means is uh, first, uh, let me show the conventional fitting pro problem. If you have a data, uh, a combination of uh, X, X and Y, and you will usually assume the, the fitting function as a, as a parametric function of A. And uh, we minimize the mean square error between the real data with the assumed function and obtain the parameter set of A. This is a conventional fitting problem, but in the Bayesian approach, it's opposite. Once uh, we are trying to obtain, once data is obtained, and uh, we are trying to obtain the, the probability of the parameter A uh, by using the Bayes equation. In this equation, that can be a change like this. And the, the term is uh, likely for a function so you can calculate, once you decide the A value, uh, you can calculate each of the data point uh, probability and then uh, multiply them. And then this one is just a normalization term, uh, the probability uh, when you can obtain the data. And the key point is this PA, and which is uh, sampled. So parameter A uh, randomly sampled based on the probability function. And finally, if you calculate this value, you can obtain the, the output of the posterior, posterior, uh, the probability of A. So which gives uh, the, uh, the most likely A value. Similarly, uh, this Bayesian approach is applied for uh, GP regression. In this case, uh, instead of A is sampled, we uh, directly sample the function itself because uh, GPO only gives uh, the, the, uh, uh, the function distribution. So uh, function is uh, sampled and then uh, finally we could obtain the, the most likely uh, function by using the posterior probability. So in the case of uh, GP case, function is directly simple to find a function probability in a sense. So what we applied in this measurement is actually like this. First, uh, make a initial measurement. In this case, 10 data point was measured. Um, by the way, this is a simulation case. And then um, by using the GP uh, fitting, GP, uh, some and GP estimation, we could estimate the, the average value and also the range. And we find a parameter, a parameter a position where the, the dispersion is very large, meaning the, the signal is still not clear. And then repeat the second process, third process, fourth process many times and gradually obtain the best estimation. So here's an uh, example here. So uh, every time we uh, obtain the signal and then estimate the uh, function, functional form, and gradually, uh, actually, uh, initially we don't see any kind of oscillation, but gradually we find that some sort of the real uh, functional form. So 
uh, by using this efficient sampling, uh, we can uh, recover the real signal shape. 